But energy, uh, the first thing that you have to know is that energy is the largest industry in the world. Energy is an $8 trillion a year industry. Uh, we spend more in energy, we meaning the world, spends more on energy than on, on food, beverage, and clothing put together. Okay? Uh, actually, we spend twice as much on energy. It's large, which is a $2 trillion industry, um, and it's larger, much larger than information technology which is, of course, what dominates uh, Silicon Valley. The only other industry that comes close to energy is finance, financial services. Uh, but it, energy is still larger than, than finance. If energy, if the energy industry, which I call Energy Stan, were a country, it would be the second largest economy in the world. It would be right after the U.S. and right above China, Japan, and Germany. That gives you an indication of the size of what we're talking about. And that's every single year. Okay, and it's growing. In the U.S., if we took the oil and gas industry, so let's call it oil and gas land, if oil and gas land were a state, it would be the fifth largest state in the nation by size, land mass. So for oil and gas exploration in 2008, uh, the industry leased from the government alone, not including private lands, 74,000 square miles. And offshore water, 68,000 square miles. They would be 20% larger than New Mexico, fifth largest state on the nation. Uh, according to many people, uh, and Richard Smalley, who won a Nobel Prize in 96, was one of the early folks who said energy is the single most important issue facing humanity today. No matter uh, how you see uh, many of the most important issues, war, water, uh, poverty, health, uh, the economy, the environment, food. And I'll talk a little bit about some of these today. Security, uh, they either build on energy or are very, very directly built uh, and related to energy. Um, and so not only is energy large, but it's also strategic and it touches on a lot of other issues in ways that you may not think about in daily life. Uh, energy and water, it takes 2,500 gallons of water to produce a single gallon of ethanol from sugar cane, okay? Sugar cane, which is uh, supposed to be a success in terms of biofuels. 2,500 gallons. Energy and poverty, two billion people plus billion people. Energy and the environment, 81% of greenhouse gases in the U.S. Um, come from three energy sources, coal, uh, oil, and natural gas. So just these three energy sources uh, create 81% of the greenhouse gases that we emit in the U.S. Energy and environment. If you haven't heard of ocean acidification, you will. Uh, ocean acidification is, has been called the evil twin of climate change. Uh, basically, the oceans are absorbing much of the CO2 that goes into uh, the environment. And by doing that, they're becoming more acidic. By becoming more acidic, 
um, meaning the pH has decreased by about 30%. It means that a lot of life forms cannot survive because they cannot form shells, they cannot form bones, uh, and so on. And this includes plankton, which is a basic food for pretty much everyone else on the oceans around the world have no access to electricity at all. Okay? Uh, the energy that they get for cooking or lighting or whatnot comes mostly from kerosene, firewood, cow poop, I mean whatever they can burn, they do. And this is two billion people around the world. Okay? Um, in India alone, there are 500 million people who have no access to power, to electricity. Um, and of course, having no access to power, electricity, means you have no power in society, in other words. Energy and food, and water, and poverty. So 40% of U.S. corn production in 2011 went to biofuels, 40%. And biofuels represented half the increase around the world in major food crop consumption. So that's how energy changes the supply chain in food. And by making food more expensive, of course, a lot of people can't eat. And so energy and water, again, and security. 40 to 80 million people in the 20th century were forcibly removed from their homes to build hydroelectric plants. 40 to 80 million people. So, energy is large, it's strategic, and it's still growing. Okay, it's still growing. World energy demands have trended up throughout history, okay? Except during wars and recessions. Otherwise, energy consumption has trended way up, actually. And this is just the last 40 years. Uh, and, and here you can see that coal has doubled, uh, oil has doubled, uh, gas has doubled, and that was before the uh, fracking revolution. In fact, if you look as far back as 1650, this is for the U.S., Energy demand has grown 2.9% per year since 1650 in the United States. If we are here, the US, Canada, Norway, and so on, here means that we have a high standard of living. Um, a lot of countries want to be where we are, okay? And what that means is that the consumption, as they go up the human development index, their consumption of energy is going to grow. Today we use about 14 terawatts okay, of energy. If the world uses, in 2050, what we use in America today, we would need to increase uh, the capacity in the world by 7x. So basically, we would need, for every barrel of oil, we would need seven. For every pound of coal, we would need seven. Hydro, seven. Now, if the world consumes at Europe's rate, which means Americans are going to have to lower our consumption, then we'll only need 3x the energy in 40 years. So if we consume today at Europe's rate, and Europe is fairly energy efficient, mostly, uh, we're only going to have to triple 
the energy infrastructure. So think about the size of the industry. What's the industry today, eight trillion? Think about doubling, tripling that inside of 40 years. I mean, most of us are gonna be alive to see that. Now, uh, the most conservative forecasts, the forecasts that say we're going to do energy efficiency, we're going to do 50, 60 percent energy efficiency, and, and so on and so forth, even if you do that, we're going to have to more than double. And these are the smallest uh, demand numbers for 2050. And that's what I took, okay, for my for what I'm going to talk about next. So let's assume that that's what it is. So we're going to go from 14 terawatts to 30. Um, and industry revenues were 8 trillion. And, and something that never happened before, which is, and we assume that we're going to have stable prices for energy um, at 2011 levels. And we're going to grow only at 1.75% per year, which is way less than actual growth so far. Energy revenues. So pretty, you know, low, very conservative numbers. Energy revenues over the next 40 years will be $500 trillion. 500. I mean, these numbers are staggering. I mean, they, they become meaningless. They're so large. But that's energy over the next 40 years. Uh, so let me switch a little bit the conversation 